to the channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about starter heat soak. And to show you heat, well, this is a propane tank. Put the two together, probably have an explosion. Or you have a GM starter that doesn't wanna do its thing. You probably came to this video confused, disoriented, not really sure what to do with your life. But this is a starter. Sometimes it gets all hot and bothered, doesn't like to crank fully. I'm gonna to focus today on the GM LS starters. Super compact gear reduction starter, but unfortunately suffers from heat stroke a little bit. Before we can get started heat wrapping, no pun intended, we gotta pull the starter out of this car. God damn it. Get I'm sure that removal was fun on a 1963 Buick Riviera with a LS engine smash into that frame. Bet there was a lot of clearances and just the right spaces that you desired. There weren't any, in my opinion, so take it with a thick old boy grain of salt is. When you got a starter with a certain heat soak, it's probably on its way out unless it's a new starter. I know, I know, you're mad. But for the average person, that's how, you know, these issues start to pop up. But for performance girls like you and me, when we add headers and other header related accessories, those issues start to cause problems a lot sooner. Which is what happened here. This starter's Bendix, well, it just won't pop forward. So when it goes to crank the car, you can just hear the starter free balling around in there. It doesn't actually engage the flywheel. So, a couple different options to how you can go about fixing this. GM used to offer four shadowy fingers. Uh, a return spring that allowed this thing to not have to have as much force to go forward. You could swap that out and it would be perfectly fine, even on an old beat up starter. Well, it's fine as fine could be on an old beat up starter. Unfortunately for you or I, well, GM stopped making those return springs. Probably because the starter isn't in production anymore for any new vehicles, so they really don't have any reason to cheap out on the repairs for their dealerships under warranty. The second option, also number A, is well, just to throw a new starter at it and pray. <laughs> that usually lasts you about four or five months, I found from experience, is also option A. Take that spring out of there, cut a little bit off of it, put it back together. It's called the guess and check method. Sometimes you get it right, sometimes you have a, uh, a bending skier that doesn't like, to, <laughs> doesn't like to not be friends with the flywheel, if you understand what I'm throwing. It really fucks it up, but uh, sometimes it works. Final option today, ironically, numbered A, is to uh, replace the starter, wrap it all good and tight like with some fiberglass heat shield. Unfortunately, I pulled this starter out, hoping that just to be able to wrap it with some heat wrap and love, put it back in there and work, but she's a little loose inside. Hasn't stopped me before uh, with anything, but, um, Today, I, I, we're gonna have to replace this to make sure whatever is inside there just doesn't explode one day. Somewhere deep in your diary today that the DEI heat wrap, well, it's got an LS starter on the front of it, so they know their target market. It's basically all I can say about that. Let's start by talking about the different kinds of heat wraps. From my experience, there's two basic categories. There's a fiberglass within an aluminum cover over it. That's like the cheapest kind of heat insulation you can get. And while it does work pretty good at reflecting heat, especially when you have multiple layers of it, that aluminum foil layer, it, it likes to peel off over time. It flakes off, it falls everywhere, and then you're left with the exposed fiberglass, which slowly just starts breaking down and then impregnating your skin with little fiberglass babies and it makes you itchy. A long sequence of events there to, uh, it works in a pinch, but, not my preferred material, but to solve all of our problems in life, DEI makes something called the Ultra Shield. It's like a fiberglass material in that it's flexible, strong, bendable, yada, 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 all that good technical jargon, but it doesn't have a bonded outside layer of foil that likes to peel off. It seems to be woven onto the fiber, kind of like a pseudo Kevlar aluminum foil hybrid. Either way, I'm down with it. It is a little pricey. And by a little pricey, I mean like five times as much, but hey, when you're talking pinnacle performance, like a 5.3, stuffed in a car that weighs more than a Suburban, nothing but the best. To get started wrapping, <laughs> there's that starter pun again. I'm gonna take the material and fold it over so it only covers the motor portion of the starter. Don't bother covering the bolt heads. That's where it can still get heat there, but that's 
that that's not the part you need to concentrate on. Just do yourself a favor and wrap this portion of it. And if the material is fighting you and doesn't want to give a nice crease line, take it inside and totally screw up the resale value of like a, an actual iron you'd use to like iron a shirt. You and me, we're not going to be ironing clothes. We're not, <laughs> we're not that smart. So don't worry about the next person that's got to iron something in the household. Just your starter, <sighs> crisp lines. But in all actuality, that tip works really well for anytime you're working with a heat wrap that doesn't really want to do what you want and you don't want to get the whole thing wet. Because again, you can always do these wet and then let them just let them dry out and they kind of just mold to the position of whatever you left them in. While this is kind of just for looks, I like to experiment with where to start the wrap and end the wrap so that way the seam is on the back side next to the engine block. It'll make it so if it ever does fray or get chewed up a little bit, it's on the back side protected, doesn't matter. It also can help hold it together if you've got a really tight clearance between your block and your starter. Once you've got it all wrapped up tight like a baby Chipotle starter burrito, well, you gotta keep that shit tight. Now, if you wanna be able to remove your heat wrap really easily, I recommend taking your starter with the heat wrap on it, wrapping a piece of just rando scrap wire around it, and then measure how long it took to get there. That's your circumference. Go to the hardware store, Home Depot, pick up a giant worm drive clamp that's got a little bit of extra play in either direction, wrap a couple around there, you'll be good to go. But if you're looking for a more permanent installation, kind of like what I'm doing, I hope, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it with the metal zip ties. I've found over the years, if you're using the metal zip ties or even the worm drive clamps, don't get it all hulked down there and tight as you possibly can. It'll wanna to try to tear through the fibers and it'll end up just creating a hole over time. We don't want that. And then go ahead and take a pair of needle nose pliers and bend over the edges that you cut. That'll keep you from losing a thumb, arm, body. It's a laceration when you forget you did that and you go to install the starter and uh, you, you're you just dead. That, ladies and gentlemen, well, lady, mom. It's how you heat wrap a start. Like a professional, well, just like some guy in the garage that happens to own a camera. But it fixed our problem. And before you go all hanky-dory on me and say, Matt, you just replaced the starter. That's what fixed the issue. Oh, wait till I load this truth bomb on you. That was a replacement starter that I took out of there. Boom. People on the internet, I guess showed you that you could replace a part multiple times for no reason? Yeah, take that. But if you want more of this stuff, click that button bean down below. Ah, that's the one you know I like. <laughs> yeah, that one. And I will personally send you these videos every two weeks-ish. Well, kinda. YouTube will send it out. And it's, sometimes it's more like three weeks if I'm feeling lazy. Just do it. No, can't use that. That's trademarked. Think about doing it okay. Think okay. That option has got a high likelihood of failure. Just like me, Dad. Don't hulk it down there like the ham of Thor. <laughs> the ham of Thor. That makes sense. Now it's time to get in the meat and potato gravies of heat shrinking. God damn it. We're not heat shrinking anything. Maybe we should.